Hello, welcome back to the channel. Now in this video, I'm going to show you through a quick Chrome extension I made that lets you search a certain Twitter profile's tweets. So this is the uh, manifest file. As you can see here, it's only running on Twitter and it just uses this search tweets JavaScript file and a CSS file just here. So I'll show you how the extension works right away. So if we go over to Chrome, you can see the Tesla Twitter profile here. Now what this extension does is it adds this box up at the corner here when it detects that this is a person's profile. So it runs a quick check on the URL to see if it's a profile and double checks that there's a profile picture there. So that's how we make sure that it's a profile. And then we just add this box into the corner. So if I type in um, any keywords into here, so for example, it will then search through that user's tweets just using this search parameter at the top here. So if you type in any keywords and then from and then that account's name, that will make sure it searches that user's tweets. So you can quickly see um, all of the information from that profile. So if I just go back, you can see that the page initially loads and then it adds the box in afterwards. That's how the extension works. So let's jump over to the code now. So again, here's the manifest file. We have a simple CSS file that just styles the different elements. And then in the JavaScript file, JavaScript file, you can see that we have a object here that we call um, start function. And then we have this timer. So because of the way that the that Twitter runs, it's a I think it's a React app. So the, the content isn't there initially. So when the page loads, each part of the page appears separately. So first it loads is the left sidebar, the main content in the center, and then finally the right hand sidebar. And that's the area we're looking to actually add this in. So we have to keep making checks um, until that we find the elements that we need. So for example, if we go down here, this is the function that actually checks to see if this is a profile page. So we have this part up here where we are getting the username from the URL and we add this uh, check here to make sure there's no query parameters in the string. So for example, if we had um, any sort of data up here that could affect the, um, the username if we don't strip this all out. So that makes sure that we're just grabbing the username like this. So that's what this variable is just here. We then add that into a string with forward slash photo at the end. And we then check to see if there are any elements on the page that match that string. So for example, if we run this in the browser, if we just open up the developer tools and then check for, I'll just replace this with that string. You can see there's that element. So that's essentially what we're doing. We grab the username from the URL and then check to see if we have a match for the profile picture. And that's how we know that this is on the profile. Now there could be a few slight issues with this the way it is at the moment. So if I took that capital letter away and then tried to load it, that wouldn't match. So that would be an issue. Um, that you need to look at in the future. Um, but anyway, if we go back down to the function here, we can see once it finds that, we're then looking to find our target. So that is the search box in the corner over here. So we're looking to find this particular element. Once we find that element, we know that the right-hand sidebar has loaded and we're on a profile page. So that then takes us to our search tweets function down here. Now this is where we build up the content of the actual search box that we have. And then we wanna add this onto the page. Now, because of the way Twitter is structured, the class names change all the time. So if I just inspect the search box over here, you can see that these um, names are very difficult to attach anything to and they change dynamically all, of, all the time. So you can't reliably use these as your, um, as your hooks into the DOM. So you have to be a bit more creative. So we know that this is the input box and that's not going to change. So what we can do is we can check how many parent elements there are until we get to the div that we want to add our um, search box into. So in this case, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 10 different parent nodes that we need to cycle through before we can find the parent element that we need. And then we just insert our new element. So our search box after that. So that's quite straightforward once you manage to find out which part of the page that you need to add this into. And then we just set a simple um, event. So we listen to see if the user either types in the content. So if I just go back to our other page. So then all it does is it listens to see if we type something in and press enter or if we click search. And that's all it does. And then it just changes the uh, location of the page. 
to be the query parameters that do the search. So it's, for example, we just get the username again and make sure we say from that user and then there, this qubit here is the search query that they've typed in and that's it. But if you'd like to see a more detailed example showcasing how you can create an extension like this from start to finish, just drop a comment and let me know. Um, but otherwise stay tuned for the new series we have coming to the channel soon, where we're going to be making a Chrome extension that lets you take simple notes and uses Firebase as a database with authentication as well. So stay tuned, thanks for watching and subscribe for more videos like this.